Um, it is the case that human beings have a nature, and, and we have to contend with that nature, and so we can't just create our own values. And, and what, what Jung, especially Jung, Freud started it, but especially Jung believed that, well, in some sense, what had happened was that we had lost the externalized religious narrative that had been projected by our imagination out onto the world. You know, you think about the, the constellations and, and, and the names of the constellations and, and the idea that the skies were populated by gods, you know. That was an externalization of our imagination, right, projected out into the world. We were seeing the world through our imagination. And which is exactly how we do see the world. And as we proceed, we're better able to distinguish, let's say, what's imagination from what's objective world. But that doesn't mean the imagination disappears or that it's without value, because the imagination is part of what helps us, let's say, confront the future, because we do that with our imagination. And, and to compose things in, in possibility before we realize them in actuality. So for Jung, the world of gods just collapsed within, back into the imagination, and it was into the imagination that we had to go again to discover what we had lost, to discover these, these lost values. And that's akin, in some sense, I suppose, to rescuing your father from the belly of the whale. A very brilliant, brilliant tour de, intellectual tour de force to, to manage that supposition, especially back when, back when he did it. And, and I think... I see no evidence whatsoever that he was wrong, given, as I said, our radical inability to command ourselves as if we are our own in some fundamental way. We seem subject to, now I'm, we seem subject to intractable moral laws. And I'm, I'm not trying to make a case for the accuracy of those laws necessarily or for their metaphysical origin, but I am trying to make a case for their psychological and phenomenological reality. You definitely experience them insofar as you suffer, let's say, the, from, from, the, from the pricks and arrows of your own conscience. And I, I doubt if there's a single person in this room who doesn't regularly suffer in that manner, and some of you suffer like that virtually all the time, well, you know, which can also be a problem. In any case, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to, to note that we're not exactly masters in our own houses. And that, that's, a, that's a, such an interesting thing to note, because you think, well, if we're not masters in our own houses, well, what is it? Is it, just, is it just a chaotic internal structure? Is it merely the voice of nature and nature's various instinctual subsystems? That doesn't seem to be correct, because we do integrate them into something approximating a unity. There's more than just the basics of nature. We have language, we have communication, we have culture. We build up above nature something that's more than nature, but we're still beholden to it. The question is, well, what are we beholden to? What is this that we're beholden to? And socially, politically, and individually, that we cannot escape from? Well, so that's part of the question.